Savior Jesus Christ. Because of his atoning sacrifice on the cross, we can come before your glorious presence as your children, assured of your grace, mercy, and help for every need and trouble. Thank you for your perfect love that saved us from our sins. Thank you for giving us the scriptures that reveal everything we need for life and godliness. Thank you for Holy Spirit our Counselor. Search our hearts and expose the sins we need to repent of. Pride, hard-heartedness, doubt, ingratitude, negligence, unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, lying, and every form of disobedience towards you. Forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us focus our whole heart and mind on you, that we may worship you in the spirit and in truth. Father, transform us more and more into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the power of his name we pray. Amen. Joy 
to the world the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Lord has already bled, blessed us in the reading of his words. At the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, the angel announced to the shepherds, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Have you ever thought what kind of great joy might have filled 
the shepherds then? After that spectacular appearance of the host of angels, the shepherds did find the baby in the manger and they were ecstatic over what they had heard and had seen and they went back to their homes praising God and they spread the word to others. The elderly Simeon was so filled with joy upon seeing the infant Jesus that he said he was ready to meet his and at any time. How about you? What is your idea of great joy? During the Christmas season, many people dress their homes with special decorations, a lot of lights, and prepare to give and receive gifts. There's the release of the 13th month pay in our in our country, the Christmas bonus, and so on. The mood is festive, with the more than usual food on the table and a time for partying, getting something new to wear. Christians prepare for more worship services, choir cantatas, family reunions, so forth and so on. But it's also quite true that not everyone, Christian or otherwise, can celebrate that way. Some may be physically ill. Some of you might be cash-strapped. Others are jobless. Still others may be mourning the death of a loved one. By the end of January or thereabouts, when the Christmas trimmings would have been removed, the parties over, the euphoria has waned, we would be back to regular programming, so to speak, back to reality. And what is that reality? In Jesus' time, that reality was bloody in Jerusalem and in the surrounding areas. The cries of fathers, mothers, and whole families all together could be heard as hundreds, perhaps even thousands of homes with innocent male babies, two years old and below, were ordered to be killed by Herod. The baby Jesus himself had to flee together with his parents to Egypt to escape Herod's wrath. Indeed, it did not take long before the prophetic words of Simeon about Jesus started to unfold. He said, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And to his parents he said, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. From Luke chapter two verses 34 to 35. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, from the 53rd chapter, verse 3. Jesus did experience this in his life from infancy. This year, most people around the world, including Filipinos and perhaps our very own families, are suffering and have become familiar with pain and the various effects of the pandemic on our daily lives. It would not be far-fetched to say that its effects will be felt the following year or even for years to come. Even as we meet today, there are reports of new variants of the virus, just as virulent or even more virulent, which have started to infect people in the United Kingdom, Germany, and other countries in Europe. Aside from physical illnesses and suffering, we know that there are people who continue to be denied their rights or are unjustly treated by an imperfect or corrupt justice system. There are victims of man-made disasters, 
masses who are hungry and homeless due to poverty. There are wars fought left and right in various parts of the world, as well as those who are materially rich but extremely lonely and broken. And so we go back to God's word about the Messiah who would give great joy to the whole world. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 to 7 reads in the contemporary English version. A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His names will be Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God, Eternal Father and Prince of Peace. His power will never end. Peace will last forever. He will rule David's kingdom and make it grow strong. He will always rule with honesty and justice. The Lord All-Powerful will make certain that all of this is done. The great joy of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will bring a joy that is not from the festivities of a seasonal celebration of his birth. The great joy is when Jesus Christ himself will rule all peoples with perfect peace, justice, and righteousness as God himself would in all his power and perfection for all eternity. That is why the Messiah's names shall be the Mighty God, the Eternal Father, the Prince of Peace. The world that we live in right now is far from this because Jesus Christ has not yet taken his place as ruler of the world. And many before us have asked, as we also have, when will that rule of Jesus Christ take place? 2,000 years ago, his disciples have asked that question before Jesus ascended to heaven. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They were looking forward to the prophecy of the Messiah to take David's throne, to rule on David's throne in a kingdom that will last forever. That was, of course, in reference to the prophecy about the Messiah. Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. As finite human beings, we are bound by a finite sense of time where God is not at all bound, where God is outside our time frame. Second Peter 3.8 reminds us that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. God is outside the frame or limits of time. The book of Revelation tells us that many cosmic events will take place before that day when Jesus Christ will come again and herald the, um, the coming of his kingdom. We can also read the signs that will point to the end. Surely, the end can only, or rather the world can only move closer and closer towards that day but definitely we are not quite there yet the point is that the great joy of Jesus Christ's complete rule is nothing short of what Isaiah had prophesied but it is not yet here it is a hope that we Christians continue to hold on to my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the glorious hope that the Bible teaches us to set our hearts on. It is the hope that Abraham set his heart upon, the city 
whose architect and builder is God, according to Hebrews 11, verse 9. Abraham lived by faith in this promise until his death. He was one of those faithful ones that did not receive that promise in his lifetime. He did not live to see that day, but he continued to uh, keep faith. Hebrews 11.13 says it beautifully. They, referring to the uh, to the um, pillars of faith, the men and women of faith, they only saw the promised things and welcomed them from a distance. They were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. They acknowledged that they were only foreigners and strangers on earth. This great joy was something that Jesus himself set his sights on. Hebrews 12, 2 says, For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. The faith that we Christians are called to live by is the faith in God's promises of the great joy which shall be ours when Jesus Christ will bring his perfect rule upon the world in God's perfect time. We would not settle for anything less than that great joy, not even the joys that this world can bring. This is the hope of that coming great joy that will enable us Christians to endure the present sufferings, the imperfections of the present world. What 2 Corinthians 4.17 calls our light and momentary troubles that are achieving for us a glory, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And what has kept me personally going as well is to see that whatever joy and consolation triumphs and victories we have in this life are but light and momentary ones compared to the incomparably great joy when Jesus comes to reign over us. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us press on with a faith, with that kind of faith, Set our sights on that great joy of having our Savior Jesus Christ rule as King of kings indeed and Lord of lords on that day throughout the whole world. Whatever be the troubles we are facing now or may face in the coming days, let us always remember that they are worth enduring for the sake of Christ now and his coming reign. Likewise, whatever be the joys and victories we have now or in the coming days, let us remember that they are but light and momentary compared to the great joy that is yet to come. This is the life of faith that God wants us to learn to live by. If we do, we will not only experience His peace, but we will be shining lights for others who have not yet come to that saving faith in Jesus Christ. As the most beloved of all Christian hymns says, the hymn that is entitled Joy to the World declares, Jesus will rule with truth and righteousness and justice yet on that great day of joy of great joy this is the kind of uh, kingdom rule that should keep us going jesus christ came to be born to live to die and to rise again not only for our present salvation but for our assurance of eternal fellowship 
with him. This is the great joy which is to be upon us today and to serve as the brightest vision so that we can keep on pressing on in faith and obedience until he comes again. That is the hope of Christmas. That is the great joy of the world that has begun to come on Christ's birth and is yet to be fulfilled when he comes again. Indeed, let there be joy to the world in anticipation now and in its fulfillment on that very day. That is our hope. That is our joy. Shall we pray? Our eternal Father, Almighty God, wonderful Counselor, our great King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we bow before you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that your great joy is an unspeakable joy that cannot yet be experienced in this broken world of ours. No matter all the glitter, the pomp, and all the um, excitement that the world may bring today, this is but very light and temporary compared to that great, great joy that is set before us. Thank you, Lord, because we know that that joy will keep us going, will keep us growing, will keep us uh, holding on and being faithful to you to the very end. Thank you, Lord, for the peace that passes all understanding when we think of that future, we think of the world that is yet to come. We pray, Father, uh, that each one of us would have received that understanding of the truth, the real meaning of that great joy that will be to all people. We know, O oh Lord, that on that day, indeed, Christ will reign. He will be the King of kings and Lord of lords of all. And every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that indeed Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, may that joy continue to fill the hearts of each and every one of us, regardless of our station in life, regardless of our present condition, physical, emotional, material, financial, and even spiritual. Thank you, Lord, that that is the true joy, the deep joy that Jesus said we can find only in Him because we continue to trust Him, Lord, now and forever. We pray, Lord, for the joy that will bring even healing to our bodies right now, the joy that will lead us to uh, trust you more and more, that will lead us to greater obedience, that will lead us to fuller love for you. We pray, Lord, for those who are indeed um, experiencing a, a variety of emotions right now, a feeling of loneliness as well as a feeling of of uh, the fellowship of more more uh, more opportunities to be with family and friends even just by virtual communication lord we pray for those who are mourning over the loss of loved ones over the loss of good health we know, O oh God, that there is nothing that is impossible with you. Even right now, you have commanded us to always ask, and it will be given to seek you, and we will find you to knock, and the doors will be opened to us. 
Thank you, Lord, for your love for your church, the family of believers, which imperfect as we may be, you are perfecting us, sanctifying us by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for each and every person right now, regardless of age, those who are young and old, those who are uh, those who are near and far, that uh, truly they will experience the power of your word spoken, the power of your word that is heard, the power of your word that is read, the power of your word that is understood through the wisdom of Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God, for loving us with an everlasting love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. God's peace, love, wisdom, grace, favor, and joy guide your every step, every day. To the praise and glory of God the Father, the Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Sunday, everyone. Today we would like to uh, greet you who are celebrating your birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Happy birthday, Jeconiah Eliezer George Gozun or Jeco, Aleka Joy Hoson, Merlinda Ranes, Jashurun Sion, and Felimon Tunyakao. Miguel Antonio Bernardo, Jerwin Roque, Elina 
Brienne Singson, Annabel Dait, and Elsa Lavalle. They are celebrating their birthdays uh, next month, that is Janu on January 1 and 2. And happy wedding anniversary to JV and Janet Umali, Luke and Eileen Galolo, Alfredo and Veronica Vicente, George and Ruth Gozun, Alan and Arlene Tagadiad, and on January 2, Brian and Faith Nukum. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of you. We want to pray for you. So let us all unite in prayer. Loving God and Father of us all, Father of our family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We lift up to you these, uh, our birthday and anniversary celebrants, Father, that you may bless them, uh, especially as they celebrate important milestones. We pray, O oh God, that uh, they will be whole in body, mind, and spirit. They will increase in their knowledge and love of you, and they will grow more and more in the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we uh, lift them up to you so that um, they will know that all their needs will be met by you and that you will guide them, Lord, in the way that they should go. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall see you on Wednesday for prayer watch and our New Year's Eve service at 7 o'clock on December 31. Goodbye, everyone, and God bless you.